Episode what? Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> 12? Let's go with 12. I'll check it here while you're talking, but go for it. Oh, oh we re- we're recording, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, um, yeah, for, for everyone who's going to watch this, apologies for uh, not knowing the, uh, the number of podcasts we've had out. It's been a, been a very busy few weeks for, for both of us. I have recently moved out of the city. I'm up in upstate New York, which is um, a very nice change, but that was a, a hectic couple of weeks. Episode and 13. Benjamin, Benjamin, episode 13. There you go. So welcome, welcome back. Um, sorry for the, uh, for the delay in, in content, but um, anyway, Mr. Doyle also has some updates on his end as well. Um, sorry, I was scrambling there, checking, uh, checking what episode we were on. Uh, we have we have three new subscribers, so shout out to the three new subscribers. I won't say anyone's names just in case, but I haven't been. On I have a yet. feeling. I have a feeling that's Overtime Heroics, the writing group that I that I write Could for. Yeah. yeah, a Could lot be. of them. A lot of them at Osh recently. Um, what the the channel was. So, shout out to the boys for for the support. But um, no gents. Yeah. Anyway, Doyle, give us a breakdown yeah. there. Good to see your ugly mug again. Yeah. 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 So I have had uh, I've had a great couple of weeks. Well, I. Stressful enough couple of weeks, but uh, subsequently a great couple of weeks after the fact. I gave my notice into to work, so I've been uh, I've been with the same company for six years, um, which was tricky because I'm uh, really good mates with, the, with my boss, really good mates with a lot of the team and stuff. So um, it was a stressful enough kind of a period, but um, it's it's done with now. I have a I have another job I'm starting on the first of October, which I'm excited about, and that obviously means that I have another. Seven and a half weeks off, so uh, I'm uh, enjoying the hell out of life. Uh, the weather's been weather's been sick here. Well, for Irish standards, it's been very nice, like 22, 23, which is which is hot enough in Dublin. You remember? Um, so oh, just been, that's that's sweltering in Dublin. Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's not a dry heat. Like it's a very yeah. very hot heat when it gets even when it gets past twenty degrees Celsius, which is what seventy five Fahrenheit for our yeah. American viewers. Um, yeah, it gets it gets warm, but yeah, we we've had a we've had a mix. We've had either it's been blazing hot, but we had a storm um, last week that actually had the power out for a few days. Um, yeah, it was bad. There was tons of trees down, like tons of um, what are they called the um, the power power lines? Sorry, yeah. Um, yeah. Some trees came down on top of them. <clears throat> um, and also, most importantly, we've had some exceptional violence going on as well. So um, we have we have a lot to catch up on. So we'll start with um, what UFC Vegas five was was that it? It was um, Brunson and Chabazian. Um, mm. So yeah, we won't go into too much detail. Brunson looked amazing. That was um, that was a seriously impressive performance against uh, one of the hottest prospects in the in the UFC. Um, I was happy for him. I was happy for Brunson. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a massive Brunson fan, but I mean, that was a seriously seriously good performance he put on there. Mm. I think the only thing with Brunson is he's done that before, where he's he's looked phenomenal and then he kind of, you know, he drops back into consistent or inconsistency where you know he'll he'll lose or he'll win two, he'll lose one, he'll win three, he'll lose. You know, he, he's had a bit of a weird run, but he that was one of his most perform. Uh, impressive performances to date for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. I I thought it was a. <clears throat> Like situationally, it was nice because Brunson loses that. He's kind of fucked, right? He's like 36, heading for 37. If he wins, he can have a last shot, a last run at the title. Um, Or Sebastian's like, what is he, 14 and a half or something? He's like the youngest person to yeah, ever I, win by KO he's, he's like 21 or 22 is I think, it i think he's 20 i think he's 22 and um yeah unfortunately so he, can, he can lose and still have an amazing yeah, career no, you know of what course. I, mean? so I was just happy anything, with that result I, i'm almost he'd either lost once or he was undefeated as undefeated. well and i i think for a for a for such a young prospect who's so technically gifted i think you know he probably has a good mindset you know i would imagine like he he seemed to handle the loss very very well afterwards and He's so fun to watch, so I can only see that benefiting him down the, you know, down the the, the line. Mm. Um, you know, Ronda Rousey is his things. manager. Do you know that? Yeah, which is well, you need to get away that? from that because like Ed is is his coach, and surely he can find a, a better coach than that. You know what I mean? Like, but I, he's but he's brought him to. He's been with him for every fight, so 
it's hard not well, to. Well, this is true. This is true. But yeah, I mean, he's obviously Shorty's inside the like, circle, you know, and not. But could you imagine? Could you imagine um, Shabazian going to someone like um, like Trevor Whitman or yeah, um, what's his, his name? Maybe his name's you know, right or, or or he might be better off where he is. It's 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 hard to say. It's fucking hard to say. So. I don't like well, Gregor at all. He pisses me off, and I don't like yeah. Ronda Rousey either. But I got to look at it objectively. He's he's done pretty fucking well in that gym to date. Um, well, look, I mean, he's got a he lot of time even, to he, he's got a lot of time to figure it out as well. You know, twenty two mm. years old. You're already you know he, he's he's close to being a UFC star, and um, like I'm I'm sure he'll be I'm sure he'll be back with a vengeance. You know, maybe maybe take a little bit of time off, fight again in six months' time, and and I'm sure he'll be back to dropping people dead. Um, I mean, I saw him live, and I can't remember who it was, but he finished with a head kick, and it was terrifying. Um, head kick KO was just insane. Uh, if I, I maybe I may be completely off on that, but I'm, I'm almost sure I saw him live, and he beat the shit out of someone. So um, anyway, then we had Luke, who put on another incredible performance. Like man, he looks so good. And also, you know, as we just chatted about, like he's only 28. Um, yeah, which is crazy. So he he he's, he's got to get it. He moves he's like he lo- moves like a oh. young Aldo, you know. He's very similar kind of a style. It's a it's a it's a beautiful, violent thing to watch. He's nasty, like everything he throws hurts. And he's, he's got uh, he's class. I'm a huge well. fan. He's, yeah, I'm a huge he's got fan. A, he's got a chin on him too. Like the prize fights were insane. Like the shots that he took, and he just keeps coming forward. And he called out Nate Diaz, which I would be absolutely all over that would be a scrap and a half yep. they're both um you know like luke is probably not going to put diaz out so you can imagine that that's a three or even a five round fight that's going to be a total diaz four. can't diaz can't take that fight he, he yeah. can't take that fight there's nothing to gain and, well, and everything to lose and a high likelihood he loses as well yeah there's time. no way he takes that fight yeah for certainly luke is, is nasty he's like to, to me he's the the next the potentially the only young talent in the welterweight division that isn't in the top four or five, you know, <clears throat> outside of Leon Edwards, um, yeah. Usman himself, Colby Covington, these kind of guys. Everyone in the top 12 at welterweight is ancient. You yeah. know, Damian Myers like 43. So yeah. there's like, there's a there's a very aging kind of contendership there. So it's good to see people like Santa Luque coming forward. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, Jeff Neal, these kind of people. Um, yeah. You know, it's good to see these coming forward, and hopefully there'll be there'll be plenty more of them because welterweight is welterweight was always an incredible division, and then just for the last like year and a half, it's been a bit sticky in the middle there. You've got like Magni yeah. and all who are kind of floating around eight or nine, but aren't getting title shots, and you know, um, well, Magni is similar to you know what we mentioned with Brunson, where you know Magni on his day can be anyone. Like mm-hmm. he's, he had a very good last yeah. performance against. Um, you know, a very, very tough um, Anthony Martin, I believe it was. And then his his victory prior to that was sensational. But he's fought some he's fought some real beasts as well. Like he's fought Pon- Ponza Nibio, who's an animal. Mm. And he's another one who we need to see yeah, back. He's not, he's not. What's happened to um, him? He's still injured. I think he was, yeah, I think he was hurt for a while. But definitely with, with Luke, um, like I'm really excited to see him because he's, you know, again, he's, you know, he's of the right age and he see, he seems to have just really mm. figured it out. He really seems to have been like, you know, this is what I need to do. I need to be more aggressive. And like every single fight of his is like a fighter than I contend it. It's, it's incredible. So he's a very marketable He's got a nice player. style. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to see. He's beautiful to watch. He's technically very well put together. Like he's just phenomenal to watch. They announced um, Robbie Lawler and Jeff Neal, I'm pretty sure. Or no, at least- Magni. Oh, Magni. Sorry, is that yeah, right? Yeah, because Mag- um, Magni had an opponent lined up and then something happened. I can't even remember who it was, but yeah, Robbie Lawler has filled in, which I'm very excited nice, for that. Yeah. But I'll tell you, at some point, I I would kill to see Lawler and Luke. Uh, oh. I know they if they don't train together now, they have trained together in the past, but think about the style of that fight. My God, yeah. what, a, what a scrap that would be. I'd, I'd pay good money to see that. Yeah, because um, Luke would really drag <clears throat> the dog out of Robbie Lawler, and that's exactly when you get the best Robbie Lawler. So that, yeah, that has that has some fireworks written all over it. Um, and then just quickly, we had um, Calderwood and Maya pretty gutted for Calderwood. You know, she, had, she was very much next in line to, to face Shevchenko. She lost um, via submission in the first, I believe. So that was that was a that was a big blow. I mean, Calderwood is like she's 
just seems like a total sweetheart. You know, she seems like such a lovely person and she's obviously a savage inside the cage as well. So, um, she, she's got a great combination. So, I mean, props to Maya for, for taking that opportunity when she got it. But yeah, that was a, that was a tough one to take for, um, for Calderwood. Mm -hmm. Um, and then lastly, quick, quick mention, Lando Venata and Bobby Green, another absolute scrap between the two of them. Um, first one ended in a draw. So Green got the, the, the decision victory in that one, but another, I'm pretty sure it was a fight of the night. Um, but yeah, what a, what a scrap that was. So yeah, that's a couple of weeks ago now. So mm. moving on, we have this week's card, um, just gone. So Saturday's card, um, where Darius looked phenomenal again, got rocked badly, looked to be about to get finished by Holtzman, came back and finished him with a spinning back elbow. Like, <laughs> what is that? Like, he's rocked. And it was a walk as well. Like, yeah, Darius. Oh, I thought you said – sorry. I, 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 hadn't, I haven't seen this card. I thought, I thought you said a different name earlier on. Um, I haven't seen this card. I've only caught up with the Black Beast fight. I've only seen Derek Lewis's right. fight. It, we had the – Leaving barbecue on Saturday, and we were just drinking, and I was asleep for the fight. So, um, casual. I missed them. I missed them altogether. I probably could have stayed up, but like, uh, yeah, what kind of a state would I be watching the fights in? You know, anyway, well, you I'd probably fall asleep on the couch. You missed a phenomenal card, man. There was one. There was there was the two fights in the main card. Um, there was the the women's. Um, I can't remember. I, I can't remember who, who it was, but um, their, their names are also like just gonna destroy my brain with my mental dyslexia. So I'm not even gonna try. But that that was uh, that was <laughs> mental was kind dyslexia of as opposed to physical <laughs> dyslexia. <laughs> yeah. um, but that was a that was more of a like grappling contest. wasn't the most exciting fight in the world. But um, yeah, and then there was there was Weidman as well, who who got so much shit for beating, you know, he won a, like a slow did he? Well. I mean, first round, he looked good. Second round, he, he seemed to gas, which is very strange for Weidman because he's so used to fighting in five-round fights. Is, and is he training round, in a gym, though? Is he? I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I'm almost sure because, I mean, it's him, Marab, um, Funkmaster. Like, you know, they they seem to have a pretty good Them boys setup are small. Though. Them boys are so yeah. small. Well, I mean, I'm not really... <laughs> That's who like, all, all of them are actively actively trained yeah, yeah, like i know yeah. that much so i don't you know I, I don't know like if he can pull many people in but i mean his grappling looked great you know and and he got so much hate off of the performance and everyone before the fight was like weidman's gonna get knocked out inside one blah 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 he goes on to win a decision you know says afterwards wasn't my best performance but i needed to get the win back and i thought he fought a great fight for for somebody that needed to to bounce back and get a big win and it was mm. against a very very tough opponent so um i was i was middleweight right i did see him win yeah, middleweight. Yeah, he dropped yeah. back down. I was remember he went checked out his card. I'm having a clue. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this won't happen again. But that's um, that's that's great news when we're talking about the uh, the, the fights. Doyle, yeah. For that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you watch them and you still haven't got a clue. So, <laughs> um, yeah. So no, Wyman looked good. I was very very happy to see him win. His striking is is worrisome though. Um, Wyman's. Yeah, he's, he's got to be just, a bit gun shy, though. I mean, how many times has he been blasted? Well, there's, 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 there definitely is that. <clears> his, 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 striking, his striking looks labored now, you know what I mean? Like, when he, um, you know, he was never known to be like a, a massive KO puncher, you know, he, he would more pick people apart, and his speed is never, you know, he's not like incredibly quick or doesn't throw. Uh, you know, like the difference between like rock hole is an example. Like when he throws a kick, it's so quick. You know what I mean? Um, yep. As opposed to to Weidman, who just he just looks his, his striking looks. Yeah, it just looks it just looks slow. You know, and that's that's my fear for him um, at middleweight yep. because I mean, a slow striker against Israel Adesanya. Like, you, could you imagine? Like that's that's not going well. You know, that's just if he gets there. He's got a yeah, long but, way to go. He's got I mean, a long way to go to get to Izzy. I, I think that's very much his, his, you know, his hope. I don't, I don't think he gets it personally, but I, it, we'll, we'll see. You know, this, this might give him the confidence and he needs to bounce back. He, he things have looked happened. Better. Well, yeah, exactly. And Stranger he defensively looked a lot better. He, his speaking head movement was a lot better. Head sp movement! Speaking of, uh, speaking of strange things, see Corey Anderson got signed by Bellator after the UFC have willingly released him from his contract. Very, the fuck do you make of that? I feel it's a good move on his part. You know, I don't think he's ever going to be a champion in the UFC. Um, so 
you know, why not? He probably, he probably will at least fight for a title in, in Bellator. Um, you know, I don't know what Roy the competition Vader. is there at the moment. Like I, I, I admittedly haven't really followed much about Bellator um, over the well, years. Well, that's great considering we're talking about the fights now. Well, we're not talking about Bellator fights, are we? We're talking about one We're one talking about mixed martial arts there. fights. Yeah, well, you're right. You're right. So anyway, that's I'm a Bellator casual, so I'll, I have no no problems admitting that. Um, dip, dip the dip the toe in a little bit further. The top like the top ten percent of Bellator fights are, are incredible. Like the ones yeah. you'll find if you search are the best. Well, I mean, ones, D- Douglas <clears throat> Douglas Lima is one of my yeah. favorite fighters. Michael Chandler, Michael, Michael Chandler well, knocked he, out he Benson looks, Henderson in the first round, and now he's bro, a free he, agent. He, he, it, it looks as if he's coming to the UFC. He's Let's pretty go. much all but confirmed it on on Twitter. So yeah, let's go. Um, That'll be savage. Yeah. He's, he's a beast. Um, that lightweight division doesn't really need anyone else, though, does it? It's fucking. It's already so stacked, and then you add him to the mix. It's it's, it's insane. I have a theory on. Uh, well, D had a theory, and shout out to D Money. And I have a theory on the whole Corey Anderson. Now maybe we're both reading into this a little bit too much. But I find it kind of strange that the UFC would just release someone from their contract. Um, and uh, and D agrees. And D hit us up earlier um, on what's happened. He was saying that he reckons that the UFC have decided that Corey Anderson is not very exciting. So they're going to let him go to Bellator um, because he'll bore the fights in Bellator and make the fights in Bellator shit. So the UFC will look better. Um and when you think about it, uh, if you look at the top of light heavyweight, you, you have like you have John Jones who's been a pain in the ass, right? Negotiation wise in terms of fighting. Then you've got Dominic Reyes, Santos, and Jan Blakovich. So Corey Anderson's actually a, a good bit away, um, a good bit away from a title shot. So it's a good yeah. time for him to move. Yep. My theory was that the UFC or WME, IMG or whatever the fuck, um, they may be about to buy Bellator. Because the UFC has a history of buying their competition. I mean, a, a decorated history of buying their competition. This has happened many, many, many times when one organization rises up. Um, they ran the WEC and the UFC in, in conjunction at the same time for years. Uh, and then they finally merged them. I was thinking that they could be able to buy Bellator. That way they can get rid of Scott Coker and put someone else in to run Bellator. And then by the time Dana's thinking about kicking it because... He has kind of alluded to sometimes recently. He's like, oh, I don't know, can I do this anymore? This is unbelievably stressful. This is the hardest thing I've ever done, this sort of stuff. <clears throat> he only did like a five-year extension at the time of the sale. That gives him like another three years or something. So three years there for someone to run Bellator under Dana's guidance maybe and then take over the full shop thereafter. Um, too far to say that it coincides with Daniel Cormier's retirement. Stick Daniel Cormier at the top of Bellator, run it. Cormier as as... as has said on numerous occasions he'd love to be UFC president and UFC yeah. president realistically can be a position where you're just a, a figurehead or a speaker or a public yeah. face and you don't take too much operational responsibility. So I could see that happen. Yeah. Thoughts? I mean, yeah, that's... Um, oh, we're flying down the rabbit hole there, but... I mean, yeah, you, you're missing your, your tinfoil hat there, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah. Corey Anderson. No, I mean, Corey it, Anderson moves, and it means DC is taken yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, the Corey, Corey Anderson moving means that the you know UFC is actually going to buy out Bellator, and DC is going to be the, the the future president. Yeah, so well, I'm not tell sure you what, you pulled, if that I'm happens, not sure you pulled all of that from from Derek Brunson making a move, but um, Derek Brunson, not, not Derek Brunson, um, Damn it, dude. from Corey Anderson. Um, if that happens, but, if that happens after me saying it now, well, this better go viral. Uh, that that'd be that'd be decent, alright. I suppose. Yeah, we'd have we'd have we'd have called it well ahead of time, and then it happens. We just need to send it to old, old Big Daddy Dan, who's sitting on top of the UFC at that time. That'd be sick, though. Cormier, I think, would be like he's that level of a of an ambassador for the sport, especially if he beats yeah, Stipe yeah. here. He beats Stipe next again by KO or, or even a decision or something. Wins the belt back, retires the fucking greatest heavyweight, one of the greatest of all time takes a director position in the UFC and then moves into some sort of a big role uh, within the organization at some point. Might not have had to do a Corey Anderson movement, but I could see that happening. Could you not? Yes, I mean, stranger, stranger things have happened, but um, anyway. Did you say stranger yeah. things have happened? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know anymore. It's been a long couple of weeks, all right? So, um, 
anyway, yeah, so the, the main event from the weekend, we had uh, Derek Lewis, who is just a national treasure. The guy just, he is, his, his commentary is almost more exciting than his fighting at times, but um, got like, did you, did you hear that? He, he was like off mic or he thought he was off mic. And he no, he didn't. Go. He knew he was on mic. He knew fuck he up did? that way. Yeah, know, he Because he, he said after he I was like, oh, is this on? I watched um, it. He goes, he goes. Because the man, they count you in and all. They'll, they'll have gone to him three, two. Yeah. And then he'll go, go to take shit. You know, he's like, <laughs> come on, you know, you know well that was done on purpose. And look, I'm not giving out. I appreciate it. It's hilarious either way. <clears throat> um, yeah, uh, Derek Lewis, uh, what's not to like about him? Fuck me now, what? poor poor Alexi Olenek. I, I, felt, <clears throat> I felt that Olenek was kind of undersized against Verdun when I saw them up against each other, but... He was fine, you know, like the grappling was good. He's very skilled. But when um, when Derek dropped Alexi there, I was like, whoa, that's yeah. a way smaller man getting pummeled by a much, much larger man in, yeah. in, in Derek Lewis. And um, well, he came in lighter, he said. He came in like 250. And, he's, and that's why he feels so good. He can move around real well. His grappling is very good at that weight. So he says he's never going to fight at 260 again. He's always going to fight at 250. That's well, for, for a man to hear. that size, like he's actually extremely explosive. Like he, flying knee. Thrown, yeah, flying he's, knee he's, to, to he's the overhand thrown, right. He's thrown a number of them, um, you know, recently. And it's like, it, it, it's almost, it's bizarre when you see it. It's like, holy shit, he shouldn't be able to do that. You know what I mean? So like, he actually has a lot more athleticism that people give him credit for, mm. but, yeah, I mean, I, I think he's now... He plays now, it down. He plays it down. Yeah, yeah. But now, he's he's now got the most KOs in UFC history yeah. as well. Anyway, Heavyweight. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's so just... So bad like, record to have. So, so fun to watch. But, yeah, I mean, I still think he struggles against, you know, DC and uh, and Stipe. But, um, well, I mean, we already know he, he got dismantled against DC in New York, um, which I was also live at, which is just fun but disappointing. Um, was you. Oh, you were? Yeah, geez, I forgot about that. That was, uh, would have been the last one we went to nice together, right? That's nice yeah. Um, so, anyway. Uh, I think so, I was. No, was it? No, no, no. Uh, so, who don't do the show was after that, was it not? That would have been November. Yeah, and then, so, who don't do the show was like yeah. January. Yeah, I think um, you're right. I'm trying to see, uh, I'm trying to see who else is up there, like who, who, who else is in contention for most KOs in heavyweight history. Um, because Ngannou's like J- got JDS, JDS, um, Ngannou. They've got to be Kane. there. Stipe's got to be there. Stipe's got to be there. Kane's got to be there. That's, that's got to be a seriously, a seriously, some list. That's got to be a competitive fucking list. But I can't, I can't seem to find it here. But whatever. Um, sorry, man. What are we saying there? Are we moving on? No, so I was just, gonna, I was going to get into this week's card. So we'll start from. Yeah. Is that the four, the four fights that, that I'm I actually. This is the first pay per view that I'm going to miss. In like six years, because I'm going to Loud this weekend. Um, cycling to all, Loud. Of all the fucking reasons to miss a UFC fight card, you're going to Loud. I'm going to Carlingford, Carlingford Lake, Carlingford Lock, or whatever. Um, so we're going to get out in the water, do some fishing, uh, drink some pints with food, because you are no longer able to get a pint in this country unless you get food. Do you, have you heard of it all this shit? It's the same here, yeah. Is it the same there? Yeah, it's there's uh, some places in town have a nine euro rule or something where you have to buy at least nine euro worth of food so like you can't get a sandwich because it's seven euro or six euro you got to get a sandwich and a scone or a you know yeah so the boys a few of the lads I knew tried to do a pub crawl and they went to the first place and they had to get burger and chips then they were like stuffing three pints in you know because you've only an hour and a half as well you're out after an hour and a half half an hour per pint and food then they went to the next place and they were like we can't serve you any drink unless you get food so they had to order a pizza <laughs> each more than nine euro each so they had to get what's the what's pizzas. the obesity levels in Ireland? Oh. just go from like here just creep yeah. up creep up creep up and boom it's on par with america so they said um, they got they said they got a half a pizza eaten and they had to get the half the other half to take away then they like nearly puked finishing their fifth and sixth <laughs> point and then they just got a taxi home because they were too full that sounds awful yeah. oh god um <laughs> So anyway, yeah. So this this upcoming fight card. Thank you for that that image I now have in my head. But of um, anyway, we got so four four fights that I want to chat about quickly. So Dodson and Marab um, is a is a good scrap. You know, Dodson's obviously somebody who's been scrap. around for a long time. Marab, Marab is um, 
you know, a, a dominant wrestler. He's looked really, really good. Obviously, trains with Funkmaster, as we said. Um, you know, that's I'm excited for that. I, I'm not I'm not really sure who I have in that one. I think that's a very, very good matchup. Um, you know, two pretty pretty different skill sets. Although Dotson can definitely wrestle as well. Um, but yeah, I think it's Dotson's explosiveness versus Morab's um, ground game and, and, and grappling. Really, um, mm. that's how I see that one going down. So I would probably favor Which Morab I- slightly, but not not super confident about that one mm. very competitive fight and a very high speed fight I like yeah. uh, I do like a card that opens up with a a very light a very very lightweight competitive scrap that'll probably involve a lot of scrambling and this is exactly that so it's uh, they're the kind of fights you want to you want to open up a pay view with just these two yeah, little love, motherfuckers like buzzing the, around the cage <laughs> the, like the, the the technicality of, of these <clears throat> these guys at, um, oh, I don't think that's the right word, the, the technical prowess these guys carry at, at those, you know, 125, 135 divisions is just, it's cra- it's so fun to watch. Yeah. Um, and then next and definitely a lot more potentially exciting, we have JDS and, and Rosenstruck. Whoa, is- hang on. There's some, there is a fight that we forgot to talk about. Uh, Valerie Larudo win by uh, KO. Yeah. We yeah. forgot to give her a mention. Should that'll probably do. But if you haven't, if you haven't seen that, it's all over her Instagram. No, no, I've found it. Instagram. Well, I just mean for people in general. I, I know we were talking about it. But if you're watching it, put the volume up and listen to it. It's absolutely terrifying. She screams as she lands the KO punch. It's like, wow. And then your <laughs> one just drops. It's absolutely terrifying. So the um, only thing I will she's say She's going right, to be a well, star. She's going to be a star, man. So on that, right, you've, you've segued ni- nicely here for me. I, I'm not 100% sure. I think there's a lot of hype around her. I think she's obviously like, she's pretty much like a supermodel that happens to be a very, very, very good fighter. Um, yep. The only thing I will say, and something I did not know about, apparently, I think she's only 22, which is insane. 22, like, yeah. She's, she's yeah. young. But, um, she's, so, but she's fighter first, man, because she's been a tight yeah. guy fucking brown belt since she was like 10 or something. So yeah, yeah. She, yeah she's an Instagram famous on Instagram now because she's good looking and people are saying she's a model and then a fire but she was fire first she like there's pictures yeah. on over Instagram and she's like four in a gi and stuff no and, and dude I don't know if you know I don't know if you knew about this but apparently she was sideswiped like three oh, days yeah. before yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the so like fair fucking play to it but taking that you know that you gotta have some balls of steel to, to do that so um you know fair play to her for that I and think she, technically technically now in 2020 that's a sexist count. If you saw uh, that a woman oh. had balls of steel, I don't Nerves know though. I, I don't, I'll let you away with it, but there, I think it's on go. a technicality. It was. <laughs> um, I, I was saying uh, that was more for. Um, that was, you know, I was giving her a compliment, but whatever. Oh yeah, um, I know. Yeah, yeah. No, listen. But the, the only the only thing is right. The knockout looks great. However, it came pretty late in the third round, um, and. The vet, no, the pretty, very end of the second. The, the buzzer goes. Very, as very end of the second. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. 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 Sorry. Um, so. A couple of things on that. She didn't look particularly great in that fight leading up to the KO. Um, I think that it's only a third fight, man. Yeah, it's but I mean, she fight. beat somebody that was like what, what, one and one and one or something like that. You know, so it's not like. But see, this is kind of the thing with Bellator, though, is they don't really have much competition, and next thing they're fighting for for a championship. You know, and that's kind of one of the reasons where I've never really, yeah. I've never really kind of bought into Bellator because there's just so much more depth in the divisions in the UFC. You know, um, you know, Jock, you know, James Callahan, yeah. he'll be listening to this. And I got to give him a shout out on this because he called Bellator Belator for like a year. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, did you see the Belator fight? I was like, the what? What did you fucking say to me? Uh, so shout out to Jock. We're talking about Belator, pal. If, uh, if you hadn't got this. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Um Anyway, yeah. So, so yeah, she that that was a scary, scary KO. Absolutely beautiful. Like she just really sat down at that punch. Huge right hook, like perfect on the button. So it looked great. Her, her dance looked great afterwards as well. Was, was a big fan of that. Um, I thought no, it was weird. I thought so, it was weird because she went obviously from extreme aggression after she did the KO. She was like, ah, like yeah. fucking running around just screaming, and then she just went into this little day dancing yeah. dance i was like whoa yeah. what a flip <laughs> yeah. um, just to another, the switch another thing was, on that was though like when I, when I realized when i realized she was like in her young 20s i was like you know what like she should not be getting so much shit you know she should not be being called like a model or you know like she she's a fighter she's young as shit like 
she's doing what every other girl at that age is doing on Instagram and, and whatnot. You know what I mean? So it's like, if, if she was a 35 year old doing that, it's, it's one thing, but she's 22 years old. She's having fun. You know what I mean? Like, people just, just want to hate in 2020. Yeah, just, just like get off, get off her back. Like she's, yeah, she's doing that on Instagram. She's doing a thing. She's getting tons of popularity and, and, and followers. And she goes in and murks somebody, you know what I mean? Like, how can you not respect that? So, um, yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, it was a serious KO. But anyway, right, back to the UFC this weekend. So, JDS and Rosenstruck, very excited for that one. Um, I think I think Rosenstruck is going to catch another body. <laughs> that's that's my... Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, if he hadn't have been bodied by Francis Ngannou, body bagged, let's say, <laughs> I, I'd be very confident that we had never know how someone comes back from getting killed like yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know if I mean, he's J- JDS, like before, JDS but... has the boxing and the power as well to really hurt him. So, great scrap. Um, great, great scrap. Really great, good yeah, side um, fight. Very, very excited for that one. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with Rosenstruck. I think Rosenstruck will, will finish him. I'm not sure which round. Uh, probably if I was to put money on it, I think the second, I think he he probably hurts him late in the first and then finishes it out in, the, in early in the second round. Um I just, I just think, you know, the way he was, the way he was murdering people up until being murdered himself by, by Francis, you know, I, I think that that's not going to go away. You know what I mean? He still carries crazy power. You know, as you mentioned previously, he's a, he's a seriously, seriously well-experienced kickboxer, you know, with a, with a lot of technical abilities. So if he just kind of, if he's a little bit tighter on his defensive game and doesn't allow himself to get hit, um, I, I think I think he's a bad matchup for for JDS. Yeah, I, I pretty much wholeheartedly agree with every word that came out of your mouth on that one. Um, I see I see it the exact same way. Yeah, but um, um, what age is JDS? He's got to be like thirty six, thirty seven now. Something yeah, he's like got to be getting there, right? Maybe even older. The heavyweight division is old. Everybody, yeah, Steve, I mean, Steve that's, that's is thirty-eight, is he? That's, yeah, that's no, Junior's thirty-six. Junior's thirty-six. Singan is thirty-three. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Good fight, Sean O'Malley as well. Yeah, we got Sean O'Malley and Chito, um, Chito Vera after that, which is a very, very exciting scrap. Um, also, I mean, our last guest on actually, Anthony Burchek, um, you know, talked about training with Chito and said that his um, his grappling and jujitsu is is very, very good. Um, which we already know, but you know, to hear it from someone that's trained with him is, is very cool. Um, so I mean, that again, you know, that's a that's a, a case of does O'Malley knock him out in the first round like he's been doing, or you know, can Cheeto get him down and and um, you know, and, and and I suppose expose O'Malley's ground game? Um, which, to be honest, I I don't know if it's as bad as people make out. I just think O'Malley is so devastating on the feet that. He's just like, well, I don't need to show that that part of my game off yet, you know. But I would imagine he's, I would imagine he's definitely somewhat capable, um, you know, on the ground, despite being an exceptionally gifted striker. But very excited for that because that that's a real, real Good genuine test. test for O'Malley, you know, yep. a real, real test. Um, and yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm really not sure about that one because I just. I think there's just like an aura that O'Malley carries, you know, so many people hate him. So many people love him, but like, he's got that McGregor type attitude and, and mental psyche where he's just like, I'm better than everyone. Like, I don't care. I'm better than you. You know what I mean? And um, he seems to carry that confidence into the octagon. And, and again, he's just knocking people dead. You know, everyone was like, Oh, why a terrible he's a test. TV. He's a must see TV. He's must see TV. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. It's um, great to watch. Great to watch. And, yeah, I mean, he's obviously a very eccentric character, but, you know, despite that, again, he's knocking people dead. He's doing his own thing. Who cares about what he does and says outside of the octagon? He's a monster. So, um, yeah, excited to see that. And, you know, it's kind of it's starting to get real now because, you know, he's starting to get matchups where it's like, you know, the hype train could get derailed at any any moment now, you know. Um, even though I, I think, I mean, if he gets submitted or Still something. Still young, like, right? Even It's yeah. like, a, like a Shabazian <clears throat> can take an L. Yeah, I don't, I don't think back he's, anyway. he, yeah, hundred percent. I don't think he's quite as young, isn't he? He's 25, 26 or something like that. Right. Mm-hmm, I don't mm-hmm, think he's, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, clearly got a bright future and you know, that's Edgar uh, and, uh, and Munoz on this card. No, that's the following, 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 following yeah. week. All right. Yeah. 
following card. I think that's. Did, the main I think event they originally. I, I think they originally were going to put it on the on the main card of this, but then they moved it again or something like that. I don't know. That yeah. that fight has been wobbled around a few times, but <clears throat> yeah, who else we got? Mm. Obviously, put it in the main event. That that was. They were the three that I wanted to chat about, and then obviously we got. You know, I would prefer to spend some time on Stipe and DC because that has. There's so much riding on that fight for a number of different reasons. Um, you know, obviously it's it's the trilogy. It's been it's been coming for a long, long time now. You know, it's it's taken taken some time to to get this booked. Um, you know, what the last one was like a, over a year ago now, right? I, I'm mm. pretty sure. I can't remember when it was, but you know, it's it's been a long time coming. Um, I for one, to 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 get in like to get into it more. Um, God damn it, dog. Um, to get into it more. Oh, you're such a child. Um, anyway, so... So the chat, the chat function of this Zoom map is great. It can send you a message. <laughs> That's um, weird. The, uh, sun's, the sun just started blasting me here. and You moved your head and the sun is blasting behind you as well. Head movement! Head Where movement! Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, <laughs> So yeah, so tr- trilogy fight, you know, it's two of the two of the best ever do it. I I personally think Stipe is the best uh, heavyweight in the UFC in in, in UFC history. Um, I think you know without DC I going, still, I think through, it's Kane. I just can't let go of it. No, I, look, I would I would agree with you because on, Kane, on merit, yeah, um, on yeah, on merit, great. like I I think Kane would have beaten everyone if he was fully fit. But I mean, you also yeah, have to factor bad. that in with with how. You know these these fighters have to take care of the bodies. You know, and I know a lot of it wasn't exactly Kane's fault, but at the same time, you know, he seemed to get hurt a lot. And you know, I think some of that has to be a small back. part of him. You know, um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. So Steve, Steve, in my opinion, particularly if, if he beats DC, Steve is the best UFC heavyweight of, of all time, in my opinion. Um, that'll be what five title defenses. Yeah, you know, I mean, the the first. The, the record was three that he had already broke. Then he lost. I think it was only two. Yeah, he set the record. Yeah, so three, he, I think. He, yeah. He, yeah, he set the record. He's miles ahead now. Yeah. yeah. And in title uh, wins, well, he's, he's further ahead again because obviously he lost it and then regained it. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I mean, if he's to defend again, um, yeah, you know, particularly against DC, like it just. It but if DC wins, is he the greatest heavyweight ever? So this is what I struggle with, and this is what I was going to say. So, like, DC, you know, technically. Like you I think it depends on how he does it. Yeah. Well, you could you DC could definitely just make the argument. Him. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if he knocks him out in the first round again, like he did, then you really or just make it. wrestle fox him for like five yeah. rounds. Either. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the one thing I would say is like you know with DC, there's no really there's no real background story anymore. You know what I mean? It's like he was uh, a lightweight, um, light heavyweight um, champion. Obviously, very controversial. You know, a lot of people don't think he was ever the real light heavyweight champion because Jones is away from the sport. Jones came back and beat him. He then moved up to heavyweight. So, um, you know, obviously, DC started his career in heavyweight, but he's never gone through the UFC rankings, you know, destroy people like Stipe, Stipe did. You know, Stipe had title, you know, he, he had a title run. You know, he had that story and he had that, you know, he was knocking people dead, then won his belt. Um, against Vadum, you know, finished Vadum in the first round, and then obviously went on a tear and winning three after that was the first person to do that in the UFC history. So, um, you know, he just he has, I think he's more accomplishments at heavyweight yeah. than DC does by by a long stretch. Um, yeah. So it's really like but how you. The counter argument is, you know, if DC can whoop him twice, does he then kind of take his accomplishments? I know it doesn't really work like that, but it kind of does work like that as well, you know? Yeah. Um, no, it's a, fair, it's a fair point. That's so it really depends. It's what makes it really the fight so interesting. On... It's what makes yeah. the fight so, so interesting. I can't believe I'm going to miss it, but I'll, I'll get it watched Sunday morning really early. Um, so I, I'll, I'll almost have seen it live. So I'll be good to go on, on Sunday if, yeah. uh, if you want to podcast Sunday again. Yeah. Um, well, it, it, again who do you want to win this fight? Um... I'm a, I'm a like I'm a big fan of both. I think DC, you know, over the last couple of years, has become a real company man. You know, which I don't like. I don't hate, but I don't really love. Like a lot, DC still gets a lot of hate, and like I think DC is like just an overall like great guy. You know, I don't I don't really think a lot of the hate is deserved. But I, I love Steve Bay. I, I think um, again, you know, I was a huge fan of his his title run. You know, when he got the belt, what he did with it. You know, it was 
was an even bigger fan when he took DC coming up because it was such a difficult fight. You know, he's and despite you know everyone's like, oh, he's ducking DC. It's like it's such bullshit. You know, and like all the work that he's done during COVID with um. You know, obviously he's a he's a firefighter, so you know, apparently the guy wasn't in the gym for a number of months because he was going doing that, you know, and mm-hmm. and helping people out in the front lines. So you know, the also a you know real kind of role model, even though you can barely understand a word he fucking says. Um, it's, and he it's barely like, and he barely talks as well. I know, but it's like um, it's like yeah. Rocky Balboa in the first one. <laughs> um, that's like Steve is just quicker. You just can't make a word out that he's saying. But um, very um, uh, voice doesn't go up or down many pitches. Yeah. It's more of a yeah, it's like mono monotone. Fast um, answers as well. Yeah. Yeah, but um, the only the only potential... I think I want DC to win. I just I don't think you know I've I've winning the belt in what has been said to be your last fight, and then walking away on top with the belt would just be a real dramatic, amazing way to go out. You know, there's been lots of people that have had the belt and then been like, right, I'm retired. But DC has absolutely stacked the pressure on himself and been like, this is my last fight, no matter what. I don't seem to. So, but another but, thing as but well. I, but I don't like what kind of state that leaves the heavyweight division in because then it's kind of, unless you do Nganu, Sipe for the belt. But why would Sipe want to fight for that belt? Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's. that's it's yeah, Dan Cormier's sloppy seconds belt. You know so, what I mean? For me, the the one thing, and there's been some talk about it recently, um, about if DC does win, it may potentially not be his last fight because Jones would then move up to heavyweight to fight for the belt. Now that, you know, like if, if you look at, you know, if if that were to happen, so say DC beats Stipe and Jones goes up to heavyweight to fight him and he then beats Jones at heavyweight, like then you then you yeah. then you're looking at you know he doesn't only go to the best of all time at heavyweight he's then very much in contention for one of the greatest of all time you know I think he would probably go to top three of all time if he was to do that I because I think I think DC is very smart <clears throat> um, clearly has shown to be a well educated thought out processed intelligent yeah. individual um, <clears throat> and he's getting older. And you could argue that Jones is heading further into his athletic prime at his age. Um, but he hasn't really shown that. He know, has his, his performance every has been more and more lackluster, though. He has every physical disadvantage. And age is then going more and more against him. Plus, that fight wouldn't be until December, right? He's then almost 42, 41. He's just getting older. I think if DC couldn't... If, if I'm DC... I couldn't beat this man when I was 34. I couldn't beat this man when I was 38. How am I going to beat him now when I'm 41? Um, I just, I don't know. I do, and, and, I, but I he, he once again gambles with his whole legacy. He can go out on top of yeah. BCP, yeah. but he's gambling his whole legacy for, for what? He doesn't need to. He's got he's secured his legacy. I, I, I don't I don't see I don't see it happening. Even so, a, a couple he's, of he's also so got I, like 25 jobs. He doesn't need any more money. He's good. He set himself completely up, like he's doing so like twelve I, different shows. If you, if you let me speak for a second, um, I d- I disagree because I think I think DC wants that back more than anything, and he, he is all about his legacy, right? So yes, I definitely agree with what you're saying in in, in the sense of you know like does he want to risk that? However, Jones has slowed down dramatically over his last three fights. You know he's he's you know a lot of people think he's lost two of his last three fights. A lot of people still think the Reyes beat him. A lot of people think Santos beat him. Like he hasn't he hasn't looked phenomenal, and a lot of people attribute that to the to the uh, performance in Austin drugs. You know what I mean? Like they they say you know this there has been a drastic drop off. Now I don't really think that's related, but I think if you know the the way that that Jones finished DC with the head kick and brutal ground and pound, like I can't really see that, that happening. Um, and Jones has also come out and said in public that he. He he's given more respect to DC at heavyweight than anyone he's ever mentioned before in an interview and stuff. You know, he said like, I don't I don't know if that's a I don't know if that's a good move for me. You know, he was like DC is a much different t- challenge at, at heavyweight. Um, well, another reason, another reason, mind. another huge reason I don't think this fight goes ahead is why the hell would the UFC want to now that Jones has been a pain in the ass about money, give him the heavyweight title and give him the most leverage of all time when he has two titles. Well, because that is a business that, model, like, that, that, but that is like a multi, it's a, it's, multi, multi million dollar. Doesn't matter. It's, it's a it's a lose lose from a from a succession plan perspective. 
Cormier wins, he steps away with the belt, and John Jones's legacy is ruined. So not ruined, but they lose star power with him. Um, Jones wins. He has too much leverage, and then he starts costing too much money, and he's already publicly given the UFC the worst worst body image ever. So I don't think the company's behind this fight. Um, as much as Dana may be, I don't think the company will be behind the fight, and I just don't think Cormier needs to take it. I don't know. I, oh, I, that's. I don't think that's so. That's a very good. That's a very good point. Very good point. Yeah, I suppose it leaves, really... it leaves them in a tricky spot, especially if Cormier wins, and that's like right. Fuck now, what are we left with? Yeah. Stipe is lost. Jones lost. There are two champions, and then the boy who bet them all is retired. Like you don't think the UFC is too happy about Cejudo being retired right now, do you? Yeah. You know that's why they're what trying I mean to is... separate themselves from him. You know, Dana won't even talk about him. He's retired. You know, like yeah. that's what they're that's what they're trying to do. It just let's see. I'd like to see it, but I I don't want to get my hopes up. Yeah. No. That's uh, that's a very good point. Yeah. From a business business perspective, it doesn't really make a a huge amount of sense. Uh, I think from a fan perspective, it makes all the sense in the world, but oh, yeah, yeah, there's obviously, there's a lot of, lot riding on it, but. Or in um, Ganu, or in Ganu. Go on, Cormier, you know what I mean? If you're going to defend your belt once, do it against Ganu, because you'll wrestle there and probably win. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, that's but, probably a better matchup for him than, than Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're going to have one more, do it against Ganu, because that'll sell too. Ganu's terrified, but he should be able to win with wrestling, you know? Um, if I'm, if I'm, Call me, and I want one more for whatever reason. Um, that I'd 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 lean. To, strange to say, I'd lean towards Ngannou before anyone else. But <laughs> imagine picking Ngannou. You have a choice to have who to fight next, and you choose Ngannou because you're <laughs> what the fuck? Just goes to show how terrifying John Jones is. Um, not as physically threatening, but um, a tougher fight than Ngannou, who's the most terrifying man of all time. But oh yeah, definitely. It's um. He's fucking yeah. It's yeah. Uh, it's it's interesting. I mean, the only thing is, you know, it's like all of these, you know, the the lighter divisions have so much depth. Um, you know, and I I really hope over the next few years the um I really hope <laughs> over the next few years that the you know the light heavyweight and um and heavyweight divisions start to kind of they start to 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 kind of get a bit deeper in in, in terms of the, the competition, you know what I mean? It's just, it's got too reliant on, you know, three or four people, you know, constant, I mean, look at the trilogy, for example, there's been no one really else, you know what I mean? Like it's, there hasn't been any pure, like, I think they should. Contenders. Um, I just think it's, it's, it's rarer to get men that are that size. Right. And, yeah, and yeah, women that are 145. But now we're starting to see even the likes of Walt Harris, those kind of people that are, that are, you know, we're seeing more athletes, motorsports, fall into MMA. So I think we're going to get bigger yeah. and bigger. Which obviously, a lot of the athletes, in particularly in the in the states, would be NBA and NFL kind of rejects, or or you know almost NFL and NBA competitors. You know, so I think the UFC's heavyweight and light heavyweight divisions are destined, almost destined, to be dominant, dominated mainly by American talent for the next twenty years in the sport. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's that's my that's my thinking behind it. But um, but anyway, I think we've uh, babbled enough today. Um, good to be back. Apologies for all the the delay. I uh, removed myself from technology for a couple of weeks, which is great. But uh, we'll be back weekly um, from now on when we're cracking again Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Let's let's get it going. And we've also we've been in contact with, or I've been in contact with some some very very exciting potential guests. So hopefully we'll have something to announce for you. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to be an exciting few weeks. More very very exciting scraps coming up. More sunshine over here in America. More golf hopefully. So um, yeah, living uh, living large right now. And work is quietened down slightly, which is nice. So I have a little bit more free time on my hands. But I'm, I'm playing golf anyway, tomorrow. I'm blowing no color. Oh, nice, nice. Mm. Enjoy that. I don't, I don't uh, know how we yeah, please do. Send pictures. Um, all right. Well, peace. Thank you, everyone.